Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. I am Danny Gregory. It's Thursday, the traditional day of drawing. It's been celebrated for thousands of years, and here we are to do our part to fulfill our duty to the drawing gods. Um, first of all, moths. A lot of beautiful moths of all descriptions. It's so nice to see moths that are or drawings that are sort of kind of similar, but sort of quite different, channeling through different brains and sets of hands. But um, there are also always some that are just completely different, completely reinvented the assignment. And I love to see that too. So however it is you like to make art, it's all good with me. Um, so welcome back. This is the first time that we've been back here in sunny phoenix although it's not really sunny right it's raining it's raining it's true we woke up this morning and it was absolutely bucketing down rain but uh and here's jj who is back on the scene back um on the screen thanks to <laughs> our uh the magic the of mag the home studio the home studio <clears throat> is true it's so nice to be back and to i don't know sleep in your own bed I ha must admit, we were pretty excited to come home so we could watch TV again. <laughs> Among other things, yeah. Yeah, no, TV is such good content out there. Such good. Well, I think, I think also we're not great at vacationing. And this wasn't really a vacation even. This is like as best as we were able to muster, right? Which is to yeah. go to a different place. And, <laughs> and still work there. And still work. <laughs> we worked less. Speak for yourself. I worked less. I didn't. I napped every day. I read books. We read cheesy books, too. Like, we are usually, uh, you know, we have our heads down in, like, three books at a time, some of them serious and all kinds of topics, but we read uh, The Lincoln Lawyer. It's true. It's true, but, you know, it's good to read history and uh, to read about the law. Yes, The Lincoln Lawyer, Volume 1, a key plot point hinges on his home phone that doesn't have call waiting remember those days <laughs> i That's miss true. those days it's like archaeology <clears throat> um but yes so we we had a nice time we hiked every day we spent uh, yes. a lot of time in nature twiglet got a lot of exercise which now that we're back to the steaming inferno she's letting us know she's missing yeah but it was nice i mean we saw very different kinds of animals there were a lot of elks we've talked about them there were Wait, except it's Elk. Elk. There were elk, multiple elk. And then we also, we, the, our last night there, we saw a great horned owl on the tree right outside. It was outside. amazing. It was, it was like in a thunderstorm. We saw it swoop in, and then it sat perched on the top of a pine tree, and we just watched it. It was so beautiful. It was nice to be able to, to draw some pine trees. Mm -hmm. It was, um, you know, it was just, it was just different. And uh, now we're back here, and we see this place a bit differently. Yeah, right? we like it again. Particularly like the swimming pool. Oh, that's so nice. How about a night swim? Mm, Our true. pool is like 95 degrees. Um, it's more like a hot tub. It's, but, but yeah. it's just nothing better than a night swim. It's true. In fact, my birthday is coming up in a it few is. weeks. It is. <laughs> it's birthday season. And my idea of a good time is to have a dive in movie. So we're trying to decide what movie to yeah, watch. Yeah, what movie should we watch? We're thinking might be the, the Lincoln Stan Lawyer? No, the Stanley Tucci film Big Night. What about the Lincoln Lawyer with uh, and, and Matthew McConaughey? I mean, it could be. That's a contender for sure. There we all be sitting around wet in our swimsuits, watching a giant Matthew McConaughey floating on rafts. It's floating on rafts. It's gonna be great. So yes, um, Thomas Thomas Rostas is joining us for the first time. Thomas. We don't often talk about movies, the, the Lincoln Lawyer, but whatever. We're all, I think we're a little giddy being back here. I know. We're happy. We're happy. So, <clears throat> so let's get on with it. We've got stuff to do. Today's going to be a bit different. I think you're just going to need paper and drawing and writing implements. Let's put it that way. I think we're going to focus on lettering, although if you would like to do drawing, you can also. I'll get to that and explain that in a second. But first, I want to talk about what we're going to be drawing with, which is this hand lettering pad from Hanamula. I have to say, I'm, I'm really 
this paper is, we got an email from Joe. What did he say about it? Do you want me to read it? Yeah, why don't you read what Joe said uh, about this paper? Okay. This paper is a true paper with no clay coating or plastic additives. You might call it a polished paper as we iron it through hot steam rollers at the mill. It was specifically designed for water-based brush markers to prevent wear and tear on the tip. Who wants a round brush tip? Super fast drying also. Yeah, it, I mean, so it's, it's very, it's very, um, I don't know. It's just, like it's skating smooth. on glass. It's smooth. You haven't really tried it yet, but you're going to, you're going to do some work I did try it. I tried it right before the sesh. Huh. Stand corrected. So um, we're going to work on this. You can, of course, you work on anything you want to, but um, it's nice to have lettering paper. Garrett it's like, says it's almost too smooth. How could you be too smooth? If it's too smooth, I don't know. I don't know. I've, that's, too smooth. That's like being... There's one in every crown, you know, and it's usually Garrett. <laughs> All right. So if you would like to get this pad after you hear me... Uh, extol its virtues and then you'll see us using it how many of these are we giving away Do i you? honestly don't know and We're that's my bad a bunch of them it, i somehow managed to not record the, the quantity but yeah you know our friends at Naomi Hamula might know. Is, Naomi? no because i didn't record it they're incredibly generous so it's probably more than one <laughs> yes a bunch <laughs> we'll give away some <laughs> we will send at you least one sheet one. of paper um in a giant box so Yes, it is. Uh, oh, B. McQuinn, did you get the cappuccino book? I wonder. She got a tan tone Hanamula sketchbook. Tan tone, that's probably the, the cappuccino. It's got to be cappuccino. All right, yeah. let's stick to topic. Okay. So, if you'd like to have this hand lettering thing, and I assume you would, and you'd like it for free, which is a, the, probably the best price you could pay, uh, you can get it by writing to us at <laughs> info at sketchbookschool.com and sending us a U.S. mailing address. Not now, a P.O. box, because it comes via UPS. So every week we say this and we still get people right with no address, right with non-US address and send us PO boxes. So if you do those things, you just automatically go into the, into the disqualification pile. And I have to listen to a lot of unhappy ranting from the uh, mail department. No, it's not this. true. It's not true. No, we just, we just bin your thing. I don't know what we do, but we, um, but also if you'd like to write to us, if for some reason you say, you know what, it's hand lettering, I'm not going to send you an email, write to us. The problem with that sometimes is it takes, a, it takes a little longer to get to us and therefore you're not necessarily in the drawing. Is that true? I mean, I, I, we always, try, to, we, I try to be fair about it. Yeah, we'd be fair. And we, we send them out like once a month, right? So, so you, there's yeah, a little it, bit of time. I just, it's, if you've won before, you won't get picked again because the whole point of this is. Hanamula wants brand new people to try their goodies. <clears throat> I mean, that's that's our naked um, motive behind this. We want new people to try this stuff. That's not bad. I don't think that's craven, right? No, I think it's fine. It's just how it is. <laughs> All right, and speaking of trying new stuff, Windsor Newton is sponsoring us with some drawing inks. Oh, these are awesome. Now, I'm a, a big fan of drawing ink. But these ones are beautiful, and I have lots of them. I'm going to show you some, actually, some ones that are even not in this package. This is, I think, the package called the Henry. The Henry Collection. Yeah, so this is, this is eight different colors, and they're drawing inks. So they're, they're, they're kind of like calligraphy inks. I mean, they're, they're, they have a, a line of calligraphy inks, too, but these drawing inks are a bit different. I'm not sure what the difference is, actually. Um, we'll, we'll get a clipper, clarification I on that. I think they're made with water. They're water-based. I think that's the difference with calligraphy. Ink. I mean, you I love those inks. Proof. You use those inks all I the do. time. I use them. I used to be a big fan of um, Dr. P. H. Martin's really vibrant ink, but I've kind of switched to the. the they're actually they're liquid watercolors. I've sort of switched to the using these Windsor Newton drawing inks, and I use them with a brush. And I today I'm going to be using them with a dip pen. I mean, just so, look at that packaging. It is cool. They they have had various artists at various points make. Uh, new pieces of art for them all around a color. And it's been going on since like the 60s. It's a very... It's awesome. It's, it's a cool thing. Um, all right. So that is what we're doing, working with. But um, I wanted to talk about Anne Frank. Anne Frank is going to be the subject of our investigation today. Um, so today... Not that this is something to celebrate, but today is the anniversary of the day that Anne Frank and her family were arrested. 
I'm sure you know the story of um, them hiding in a secret annex in Amsterdam. And then for some reason, nobody knows quite what happened exactly, but the Germans discovered where they were and kind of kicked in the doors and arrested them all and took them off. And of course, the whole family, with the exception of the dad, all perished over the next six to nine months. So, um, but Anne Frank, to me, has always been a really important person for so many different reasons. And I, and I hope she means something to you as well, um, because she obviously is um, a tragic figure on one level, but I also feel like she represents courage in the face of adversity or really kind of an upbeat no, immense positivity. Immense positivity. I mean, she's she f she finds the beauty in things, and um, you know, she was what, thirteen when they went into hiding, and then she died just after I think just after she turned fifteen. But she was an incredible writer, and um, you know, and she also s reminds us of the power of the diary, which is something that I care a lot about too. Recording your life, your experiences, your impressions, your emotions, um, you know, and it's not something that just 13 year old girls do. I do it every day. I'm sure a lot of you do, too. And it's it's just a really valuable thing. And of course, for me, um, incorporating art and drawing into my journal has been something I've always done. and has brought me a lot of pleasure. So it feels like draw with me is a great place to celebrate this. So these are a few pictures. Um, Chris Seidel is pointing out this contact sheet. There's several pictures in this contact sheet that you'll look at and you'll say, I, that's what I think of as the picture of her. Um, but there are, this is the whole contact sheet that was done not long before she, they went into hiding. And uh, it was like her school photos. And it reminds you of how, how vivacious she is. And I've put down this little mini URL there school.tiny.us slash Anne. That will take you to our post on YouTube. So you could also just go to the, the, the um, blog post part of our YouTube site, which is called Community, and you can download those things there. I've also put up a series of quotes because that's really what I want to focus on today is some of her words because she was a writer and we think of her in terms of her words. And I wanted to work with this um, just doing some lettering. So, but you're welcome to do a drawing of her if you'd like, or to just look at the drawing as you think about, about this whole story. Um, but yeah, I see. I mean, yet, not yesterday. Tuesday was National Calligraphy Day. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Then it's, it's, it is um, the perfect merger of things. Um, but yes, I see some of you have... Uh, thinking about her have been have been um Irina listen to the audiobook yeah that sounds difficult have you ever watched a movie of the story of Anne Frank did you ever see it when you were in school or anything uh, probably yeah uh Tina says she was murdered yeah she was murdered. are you I thinking mean, about this because of your mom's book about Anne Frank yeah um my mother just wrote her a memoir and we're sort of we're pulling that together yeah uh she died of typhoid in, I think it was in Buchenwald. So yes. And uh, Dee talks about being at her house in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, I've been to that house too. We went to Amsterdam and we tried to go to her house. Well, when we went, it was the Urban Sketcher Symposium. And it was just everything had to be booked, you know, months and months in advance. And even though we were there for... I think a whole month we could never get. Well, we went there a couple of times and there was just like massively long lines. Yeah, so. well, they had like some, you know, you could reserve a spot and they had the certain amount of spots you could. We never, we didn't get lucky. They should just make it bigger. Oh, Danny. I'm not sure this is the. Juliana says that she was surprised how small it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. Um, but I also think that somehow the pandemic has like added another layer of understanding to this. Right. What is it like to be in a small space and, or in a house just with the same people day after day? And that's so much what her story is, right? It's the, it's the story of you know, hell is other people or how, how do you get along with this kind of group of random people that were thrown together? I don't think that they even knew each other that well, the, the Franks and uh, I forget the name of the other family. 
Okay, so um, let's start here. This is, we, I found a bunch of quotes, and this is the one that you picked, actually, Jenny, that you thought was the one you wanted to start with. It's not the most famous one of hers, which maybe we'll do later. But this quote is, how wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. I mean, it just makes me want to cry, honestly. To be so such a bright star in such adversity. So I, I'm going to... You're going to go landscape? You're going portrait? I'm going portrait. What, what color ink are you using? I'm going to use black uh, India ink for the dip pen. This is a G-nib from Zebra. And uh, so I'm going to, um, as I said, I might do this a few times. I mean, I might do a few different quotes just because... It's fun. Now, Jenny, you're going to do it with this, right? Yeah, but, you know, I'm going to probably not show my work product. So she'll be showing her work product um, <laughs> once we're done. I'll be forcing her to. I mean, this paper is delightful. Isn't it? Yeah, I'm, and I'm using a uh, Windsor Newton Fine Liner, which is awesome. It's just fun. This feels good. It's looking like a good pen on good paper. So, I'm not a trained calligrapher. I'm not a licensed calligrapher. <laughs> you sure aren't. Um, I've, I wish I could be. Someone in the schoolyard has been doing illuminated lettering. Wow. Oh, it's so good. So now, you're... Have you definitely taken calligraphy classes? Mm -hmm. You did. Like a million years ago. Why did you do that? You know, I was interested in sort of the illuminated... I studied medieval history. Interested in illuminated lettering. But then the calligraphy class that I took, I just didn't enjoy all the rules. Yeah, there's a lot of rules. I just didn't enjoy all the rules. I was like, this is very... Uh, there's all kinds of prescribed. rules. Prescribed. It was very prescribed, and I found it... Um, not joyful. There's all kinds of rules about how you hold the pen and which stroke you go in which direction and all kinds of things like that, yeah. Yeah. So I kind of took some of the things that I learned and then I just used them in my own compilations. Took what I liked and left what I didn't. That's kind of how it should be, right? I think so. I mean, unless you're working to get a license. Right? I think if you just decide to pass, to, to follow certain rules of the road and not others, it might be bad. But I think when it comes to creativity, it is uh, okay. This is the kind of thing where I'll like leave out a word or misspell one. Or have a big blob. Yes, that too. So far, so good. Know what her handwriting was like. I imagine it was good. I mean, she's so excellent in every aspect. I would imagine she would be great. Well, she was a young girl. Yeah, but, but at a time when handwriting kind of meant a lot. It's funny when I when we cleaned out my mom's house because she, she's moved to assisted living, I found a lot of things she'd saved from me when I was that age. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gave me a sort of feeling. My writing is certainly not like that now, but I was instantly recognizable. What so did you have on. good handwriting? Um, I mean, it kind of just had its own style. I think I always had clear handwriting. You know, I tend to be... Like when you learn and you do the little grid, I was like super meticulous about it. But is handwriting a thing of the past? 
It seems like people are interested in calligraphy quite a lot, though. I mean, it keeps getting harder and harder for me. I went when I went to write a wedding card recently. I I really had difficult. My hand is just out of practice. But I think people are interested, I mean, certainly on YouTube, you see an awful lot of people demonstrating calligraphy and doing, I think, I think because we don't write that much that when we do, we kind of want to do it reasonably well. I hope people continue to keep it alive. Well, when the apocalypse comes and the internet disappears. You've been reading that book Station Eleven too much. Yeah, I'm reading Station Eleven now. Which is uh, quite a read. It's one of those books I tried reading three times, and then finally, finally, I got it to start. You went. You went down the passage. What do we say? There's a phrase that we say when you down the passage. No, that's not right. I did go down the passage. I read several passages. It's maybe you fell into it. Yeah, I fell into my stride. It took, you know, it's, it's, books can be like that where you just can't get, can't get into the, the author's voice, their way of communicating. I think Anne Frank improved the world, perhaps, or at least she gave us the tools to improve the world. You think about how powerless a person in that situation could be. How easy it would have been for her to just give up. I mean, she's quite young, so you have to say credit due to her parents, who must have been wonderful people. I mean, her dad devoted basically the rest of his life to preserving and promoting her legacy, which is a noble cause. How are you doing on yours? You know, I have started to repeat some of the words going more slowly the second time. Because mm -hmm. the first time, I kind of just needed to warm my hand up. Probably should have uh, done that before we started. You know, the moments leading up to draw with me are always hectic around here. That's true. It's like broadcast news. <laughs> um. I'm going to switch colors briefly. No, I don't want that red. That is, that red that I just grabbed was scarlet, but then instead I'm going to use uh, vermilion. The vermilion cliffs. What are the vermilion cliffs? In northern Arizona, hmm. we uh, drove through them on the way to Zion. That's where we had the hailstorm, where we had to pull off the side of the road because Margie's barge didn't have uh, windshield wipers. Yeah, that was the early days of the pandemic when we only had my mother-in-law's ancient Mercury to drive around in. I think it was no it, air conditioning and no windshield wipers. <laughs> It also has, it was my birthday. I mean, if you were wondering how I was going to tie this back to my to, birthday. To you and your birthday? I am a little obsessed with my birthday. How was your birthday? All right. Um, that's like awfully out of focus. All right, so I've completed a draft 
but I think I might try. I could try the same quote again. I might try another one. I managed to get uh, ink on my fingers even before starting the show. So, yeah. Do you have a towel? I do. You can wipe it on Twiglet. <laughs> we should get a black dog, a black pug. So Just wipe it on so her black can, face. So we can. <laughs> Twiglet, come over here. Let me wipe my dirty fingers on your face. That's abusive. So I had this idea to do a different kind of lettering with a different kind of instrument, mainly one of these markers. I'm fortunate enough to have this giant box. Helen, if you're watching, you might be envious of this. Although you probably have an even better one. Um, <laughs> Oh, look, it oozed through the paper. All right, so... I'm see, using colored that, pencil now, so that I don't think that will ooze through the paper. Yeah, I think... I mean, that can happen sometimes when you use certain colors. Can can go through the paper, certain kinds of pens, certain kinds of pressure. Um, I'm getting vermilion and scarlet ink all over my table. So... Um, Great, and I'm sure we'll see it on our duvet later. I'm going to switch quotes. Okay. You guys ready? I'm going to switch quotes. And I'm going to use... This is, this is really the, the one that I think she's most famous for. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, which is, I'm, in spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. Which is a sweet sentiment. Maybe I'll go a bit nuttier. Draw with me helps restore my faith in humanity because everybody's so nice here. It's true. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try this. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to use this. This is a, a ProMarker brush. So this point is a brush. So you can do kind of brushy things. I've never really used, the, used this before, so we'll see. Brushy things. We'll see. See how it works. Um, it looks like Arabic. Oh, cool. Um, so maybe that's like some kind of a calligraphic illuminated letter sort of deal. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have an idea. Ah! What happened? I might have pressed down too hard on your colored pencil and broken the tip off. Oh no! Don't break my pencils, please. I'm so sorry. You sharpened. You over sharpened them. All right. You don't have to press very hard on this smooth paper. So, I'm not really liking that very much. So let me see if I what I can do to fix it. One thing I can do is I can sharpen it up by taking a fine liner and just trying to sharpen the edges a bit. I'm going to use one of these colored pencil daggers. No, because I don't want to add blood to the spillage on this pit table. <laughs> yeah, see, that's a bit better. So the, the big fat marker allows you to be kind of expressive with your swoopy line. And then the fine liner lets you kind of sharpen it up so that it looks like you meant it. I'll take a little break. All right, so I think I'm going to go back to... to stretch. All right, I'm, I'm turning, off, turning off your camera so that we don't have to... Oh, wait, I forgot to change my quote here. All right. Um, I never really think before I do this. Clearly. <laughs> As is true of many things that I do in life. Uh-oh, 
giant blob of ink. Did you? Well, it's contained. We'll see what happens. I overloaded my brush, my pen, so that can cause all kinds of ugliness. <laughs> Chris Seidel says, that blob will dry in the next month or two. That's true. I mean, typically here in Phoenix, it would dry instantly, but it's weirdly rainy today. Weirdly rainy. What am I going to do with that blob? Let's see. Ha! Made it seem like it was on purpose. Cool, babe. Um, since I left out the comma, oh well, no comma. <laughs> this is calligraphy, not grammar. The question is, did, she, did I always sort of assume that she wrote in German? But she probably didn't, right? She's Dutch. Although she was born in Germany. All right, let's, let's apply the Google. I think her book was first published in Dutch. Dutch. It says, Anne wrote in Dutch. On occasion, she used German or English words. Yeah. How old were you when you read that book? I think it was in middle school. Yeah. It's one of those books you read when you're kind of her age and then you feel inadequate. As you so often do at that age, or at least I did. Did you feel inadequate? Uh it dimensionalized the war for me. My parents they were a bit late in life when they had me, and so their experience in life was growing up in Detroit, Michigan. Um, during the war, and they, I mean, literally any topic you could bring up within like two twists of the turn, they could bring it back to, well, you know, during the war. So I had a very uh, American lens, you know, what it was like in the, the I mean, har their hardships and their concern about family members were fighting, and, you know, it was just, it was really the first time I fully understood um, you know, the, the perspective of somebody my age you know, and what her experience was. I'd always thought about it sort of... Just in terms of the soldiers. Yeah, right. Horrible thing to happen to adults. Yeah. I wonder if they'll be the equivalent of that in our lifetime. I hope not. I hope there's never anything quite so bad, but I think, you know, when you think about the pandemic and its effect on young people, it's uh, presumably well, going to define their, their generation. I mean, you think about like Malala, right? Mm -hmm. She's a young person. Oh, it's terrible that I'm blanking on the name of that climate activist who is um, the Swedish? Swedish, Swedish, yeah. Greta. Greta. Mm -hmm. I mean, young people have the ability to change the world. It's easy to forget. It's yeah, so what to, are they doing? Easy Why to marginalize they young people. Why haven't they changed it yet? What are they're they waiting for? They're working on it. Mm. Then they won't be young people anymore. All right, so this is a little messier, but um, it is an opportunity to maybe try some gold ink. Gold ink. Gold inker. Remember that movie? Yeah. That could be the diamond movie. Really? Yeah. 
How cute do I look this morning? Sound asleep. I thought she was supposed to be a watchdog. Isn't that why we got her? No, we got her to snuggle with. All right, so I kind of like that gold. Kind of nice. And then maybe I'll just do something simpler here. Yeah, this gold ink is nice. It's nice and opaque. This is this is not drawing ink. It's it's calligraphy ink. So it's a bit thicker than that drawing ink, which is pretty it's more watery in some ways. But yeah, what do you think? I like it. All right, I'll take it. All right, that's. that's that is bad. So now let's just put in the attribution. In this case, I'm not doing, I'm not lettering quotation marks. Oh, I'm sticking with the gold. Yeah, I mean, this gold is nice. Makes me wish I was a monk. We were talking to David Pyle yesterday, and he was telling us about putting gold leaf onto some of his fish drawings. That seemed pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to try one more thing. This is where it's going to turn sour. Please don't mess up her name. <laughs> Spelled it correctly, at least. All right, so there you have it. Wow, look at all this ink all over the table. It's a good thing. I We're can just, in a dark shirt. It's a good thing I can just throw this table away and get a fresh one. Oh my goodness, that is a lot of the ink. It is, but I don't care. All right, well, that was fun. You gonna do one more? Do you think I should? Could draw the portrait of that and add to one of the pages. No, no, not doing it. Nope, not even. Because I don't know if you saw, but I did actually do a reasonably good drawing of her. Did you see it? No, where is it? <clears throat> Let me see if I can extract it from my archive. Um, where is it now? All right. My drawing of Anne Frank coming up. I think it's pretty good. It's not, I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna apologize for it. <laughs> what was that snicker about? I'm not gonna apologize for it. Oh, oh, I see. I mean, it's not on the screen. You're drawing. It's not. Oh, there you go. Oh, right. From yeah, I like this. What do you think? Yeah, I like it. I like that a lot. So I can draw her. I don't want you people thinking. You that I people, can. you did it. I wow. Don't, I, I don't want I would think people in, yeah. to think that I can't draw Anne Frank. You know, I mean, it's sort of Anne Frank. It's good enough. It has 13-year-old energy. Yeah, she looks kind of spunky, peppy. So. I think it's good. Thank you. Um, I wonder all if right. people notice you do a... Uh, Different thumbnail every week. They don't. Probably not. I've never, ever heard anybody say that. <laughs> I've never heard anybody comment on the fact that I do a drawing every week. But I don't care. I'm one of those people, a genius laboring in obscurity, like, like Van Gogh. Oh, dear. I'm like the Van Gogh of thumbnails. Oh, dear. Oh, now you're now you're saying you noticed. That's good. I'm it's glad because it's a likely story. Uh... A likely story. A likely story. <laughs> a likely story. 
<laughs> yes. All right. Um, see that I was waiting to see if anybody would notice. Did you notice it? What are we talking about? Hashi noticed that I've had moth holes in the sweater last week. <laughs> Soon they're going to come out with a coffee table book just devoted to my thumbnails. And I'm going to invite Hashi to write the introduction. I think Hashi won the contest last week. Hashi, did you get a, did you get a notification? Hashi, did you? <sighs> All right. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Not much. Oh, I have a couple of announcements. So, um, first a couple of reminders. If you like this paper, if you like this ink, you're not going to get the gold ink, I don't think, but you will get some of these other beautiful colors. And I look forward to seeing what you do with them. Write to us, info at sketchbookschool.com. Tell us which one you want, right? Can, do they write separate? They write separate emails depending on which thing they want, right? I mean, it, yeah, it probably increases your chances if you tell me something specific about why you want the thing. What you could do is you could do... Uh, I go for jokes, often jokes. Let me just say that. In fact, Hashi, I think, won a joke. I now I don't remember her joke, but that was why she won. Like That's right. Joke. She just wrote in the show. It was the moth joke that made her win. Indeed, it was. What was her moth Confirmation. joke? Confirmation. Listen, I'm embarrassed that I can't remember it, but it made me laugh. And then, you know, instantly she was added to the winner's circle. What about Paula, who's going to try the Spark trial next week? Oh, fantastic, Paula. Yay. Two weeks of Spark for free. So we have a Spark event with Joan Martin. Many people know her from Sketchy. She, we're very lucky to have her yes, teaching with us she's now. She's teaching an incredible workshop on how to paint in charcoal. Paint in charcoal. Yeah, liquid I'm not a big fan charcoal, of charcoal, but when I charcoal. saw what she does with painting with charcoal, boom. And it's how to paint your pet, which is something, again, I think we've... We wanted to do a workshop forever on drawing or painting pets. For the obvious reasons. And so now we're merging these, this incredibly interesting, cool technique. And that's going to be not this weekend, but the following weekend. Yeah, the 13th. That is a Spark workshop. So yeah, Only anybody sparkers, considering sparkers. Sparks, if you get your free two-week trial, you get can in there. come to that for free. Get in there. Um, what else? Going back to where I was. Okay, so... Um, so write in and, you know, tell us. That Include you your U.S. mailing, mailing, mailing address. address. Yes. It comes via UPS, so it must be a street address. If you send a P.O. box, not going to get it. And, uh, yeah, make me laugh, make me cry. Tell me something. And if you've won before, don't bother. Sorry. Wow, well, you're tough. I'm just trying to help the people win. What have you done to that animal? She's, like, conked out. Isn't this just so cute? <laughs> So cute. This oh. is her vestigial twin. It's kind of like an <laughs> alien when the thing comes out of her chest. I love her so much. All right. So um, if you'd like to share your calligraphy or your drawing of Anne Frank or whatever it is that you want, you made this week, put it on social media. Put it on Instagram if Instagram is still around. Put it on Facebook if Facebook is still in business and tag it. Hashtag SBS draw with me. SBS sketchbook school. Draw with me. Put it out there. If you're a member of the schoolyard, you don't even need to tag it. You can just throw it in there. It's gonna be cool. Um, oh, the reason this art for all podcast is in black, not it's not because it's dead, but quite the contrary. We're getting ready for the new season. Jack Laws is back from his international travels. He was in Africa. He was in the Galapagos, which is a whole other story, which is kind of cool that we'll talk about. And um, we're going to be recording next, starting next week. So we will be out the following week. And we have a whole new idea for how this podcast is going to work that will make it, if possible, even better. And it's not just because I have a cool microphone, but I have had this microphone for a while. Um, <clears throat> so that's it. No, dannysessays.com. I'm going to write one tomorrow. It's going out. If you subscribe today, you'll get it tomorrow. It's free. Not true. If you subscribe today, it takes a little while. It's not true. 
It is true. If you subscribe today, you will get my essay tomorrow. Wow. That something's changed. That? Well, because it used to take a while for the automation to... No? Oh, my pug. Don't listen to her. Um, and then uh, subscribe to this channel. Why not? Uh, okay, what else? Anything else? Any final thoughts? Oh, by the way, thank you all for contributing all those ideas last week for what we should do. It was very helpful. I hope I remember some of them. But no, it was helpful. It was also just helpful to know like what kind of things you like to do. You know, focusing on, is it the particular thing that you like drawing? You know, like I like drawing an avocado. I like drawing a whatever, a, a, a weasel. Oh. Or is it uh, a particular problem, drawing problem to solve? Um, or is it a material that you're interested in? I mean, today we did calligraphy. In a way, drawing, I should have sort of said this at the beginning, but I think of calligraphy as drawing. You're just drawing letters instead of drawing, I don't know, marmosets. So it's just a thing of drawing. Um, so yes, watercolor splash, that's interesting. Tell me more. Is that like a splash that we would then do drawings on? I think that, that could be an interesting thing too. Um, so yeah, there's lots of things we could draw, and you just tell me what you want. And I may or may not do it. <laughs> I mean, we have the next month already planned out. So if you give us a suggestion and we don't do it right away, it might just mean it's coming later It'll in the happen. year. Anything you suggest, eventually we will do. It might be years from now. It might be my <laughs> grandson who's taken over the show who does it. If I ever have a grandson or granddaughter. Um, yes. So because I'm assuming that this will carry on long after we're dead, don't you think? I hope so. As long as YouTube is around. I don't care what happens to any other platform. All right, should we, should we be done? Jen wants to do an Oculus draw with me. Yes. Come next week with your Oculus headset. <laughs> and uh, we'll all draw, we could maybe draw um, a portrait of Mark Zuckerberg. Ew. In three dimensions. Yeah. In our Oculus headsets. Barf. Anyway. Um, thank you all for being part of this. Thanks for thinking about Anne Frank. Thanks for, um, I don't know. Don't wait a just not single making... moment before starting to improve the world. Yeah. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Twiggy's improving my world. Bye. I'm off to improve the world. See you next week. <laughs>